Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining the webinar today. My name is Kiran. Uh, I had the solution engineering team here at Network Intelligence. Uh, we are a 20 plus year old cyber, global cyber security solutions and services provider. Today we are discussing about uh, the topic that is essential for every organization that is going through a, a cyber security architecture review or a compliance audit, etc. So the topic today is the firewall audit. In the next 30 minutes, uh, our, my colleague, uh, Mr. Ishit uh, Shah will be discussing about the framework that uh, we can use to describe the conduct and conduct uh, detailed firewall audits. This is this includes who, what, when, and with why and how firewall audits is to be conducted. So Mr. Rishit heads the product development at Network Intelligence. So he has 10 plus years of exp expertise in product development, and he has been worked in telecom cybersecurity space for a long. So Rishit handles driving digital transformation innovation and automation, currently building cybersecurity products to help organizations to be better prepared. So he is a Microsoft certified Azure DevOps engineer expert and Azure developer associate. So while not at work, he plays uh, strategy board games or sports, making art on paper, etc. And uh, without taking much of your time, I will hand it over to Mr. Rishit Shah. Rishit, over to you. Thank you, Kiran. Uh... Good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you are joining us live from today. Thank you very much for taking your time out to attend this webinar. Uh, we will be discussing about uh, firewall audits today. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Kiran. I'm going to make some assumptions here that the audience over here that's attending does uh, know what a firewall is, what networks are, what uh, network security is, and the kind of roles that we are expecting in the audience today are uh, CISOs, security consultants, security auditors, network administrators, info security managers, uh, analysts, and so on. Uh, we'll be talking about the core problem, which is misconfigurations at the heart of, uh, among other problems that exist. Uh, a framework of uh, the elements of circumstance, the 5W1H. And uh, we'll also talk about uh, each of these elements. And then we'll have uh, Q&A as well and a pop quiz at the end of uh, the webinar. So all good. Uh, I'm assuming I'm able. To, you're able to hear me well. Uh, you're able to see the screen well and we are good to start. Uh, if you are able to see and view and hear uh, clearly, uh, I would request you to give a heads up so that we can get started with the core agenda. Pratik, are we getting a heads up? Yes, Rishit. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Misconfigurations open the door. For network security, uh, we understand one of the core important things here is a firewall, which is the first line of defense of a network. In today's world where digital transformation is at its highest peak, every organization is either moving from their traditional way of operating to digital transformation. We are using digital transformation as a platform, as an opportunity to grow their product, grow, grow their business 10x times. And the network security becomes a very important factor here because now no longer are your region specific or your building specific now. Now there is no border. It's become a borderless business. You're able to do business from any remote location to a, you know, treat and spend to customers across the globe. Therefore, it's important to make sure that your network is secure. And for that, it's important to understand that your firewall is secure. Your misconfigurations are addressed. In 2015, United Airlines had a router misconfiguration because of which over 90 aircrafts across US airports were stranded and grounded because of this router misconfiguration. That caused a huge problem for United Airlines and it was facing a lot of heat because of this. In 2018, Twitter had a breach and because of poor password security, 
over 330 million passwords were exposed online. In 2019, Capital One had a data breach due to a firewall misconfiguration, and this because of this misconfiguration, uh, the exploiters were able to extract over 100 million records from their cloud storage. Uh, in 2021, Microsoft had a breach in their Elasticsearch databases. This was because of a network security group misconfiguration, and because of that, wrong rules were applied, and therefore, 250 million records were exposed. These were conversations of customers with Microsoft support agents for over 14 years. So this was a pretty big, massive breach. All of these were simple problems, you know. These were simple misconfigurations that have happened, either on the router, it was on the firewall, or because of poor password policies or poor security policies and wrong rules being applied. So simple things can cause massive problems. This is what we get to understand from here. So Gartner has made a research which said that. Through 2023, 99% of the firewall breaches will be caused by firewall misconfigurations and not flaws of the device. So that's a very massive statement to say that 99% of the breaches will be caused because of misconfigurations. That means misconfigurations become a very important and a critical problem to solve. The next topic that I want to talk about, touch base on, is the framework, uh, which will help us understand why it is important to conduct these audits you know what is what is a firewall audit who all it impacts why is it important when do we conduct firewall audits with what can we conduct these firewall audits and finally how can we conduct these so what is a firewall audit can anybody in the audience uh, quickly come up with something on what is a firewall audit are we getting any response can we just quickly check pratik do we have anything here not yet all right no problem all right let's get going so what is a firewall audit it is a process right a process of investigating various aspects of the firewall it is a way to prove the organization's due diligence towards network security it is a way to identify risks and threats that persist within the network of any organization it also is a is a method to ensure that these configurations and rules adhere to internal and external regulations each organization has an organizational policy of network security which determines the actions that are going to be taken by network administrators or you know anybody who is related connected with network security so even if your organization does not have to comply with industry standards or government regulations or cyber security standards it still makes sense right to conduct a uh, audit right why is it important so this audit is going to help you ensure that the basic configuration sanity is done it is allowing what it has to allow but it is denying what has it has to deny right so it's important that we are able to identify the risks and therefore if we identify them only then we will be able to address them right so if we do not know what we are trying to identify then we cannot solve or reduce the risks that exist in the network so who does firewall audits get associated with who are the personas or the roles who have a direct impact by the consequences of a firewall audit or the results of a firewall audit a ciso a security consultant a security analyst auditor and network administrator these are the core five uh, personas that i can think of who get impacted or are from a day to day uh, job of theirs their role they take up these uh, issues that they face on a day to day basis right there is 
lack of visibility of the entire network they are surprised findings during audits that may happen it's a tedious process to carry out these configuration reviews there's an absence of a real time network security posture uh, for consultants there are multiple tools and scripts that are needed to audit different client environments uh, configuration reviews take up significant amount of time and effort creating reports is a big task for security auditors to understand the importance of the policy with with which the organization is driving the network security is very important to understand the efficacy of those security policies uh, having limited clarity and interpretation of the organization's network security vis-a-vis -vis what is the industry regulatory standard requiring and also the auditor is supposed to ensure that the compliance there is compliance with the internal as well as regulatory standards for the organization the network administrators okay we have a question oh we have a response which said to assess configuration on rule base yes that's correct so for network administrators and inability to determine a security risk or a compliance risk of a change uh, in the audience if any network administrators out there today i'm sure you would agree with me on this that you will be loaded with a huge amount of change requests that come in on a day to day basis it becomes difficult with the network complexity that is rising on a day to day basis it becomes difficult to understand and determine this security change and the compliance change of a change request it becomes tedious to troubleshoot these access control problems and how many of you all have had this traditional inheritance problem where uh, oh, prior to you joining the organization a previous network administrator created a clutter of rules and objects and you've inherited that and you are now loaded with even cleaning up that firewall configuration i'm sure you will have some you could give us a heads up with a thumbs up out there so these are some of the problems that exist and these are the personas who face these problems and to some extent some of these problems get highlighted when a firewall audit happens so inheriting a bloated configuration becomes a challenge for network administrators for security auditors complying to internal and external standards is becoming a problem for cso's having a real time security posture of the organization a view lack of clarity and visibility is a problem and for consultants there are multiple environments which require different ways and mechanisms in which the audit can happen according to forbes a uh, technical council in july in june 2022 they wrote out saying that these are the top 5 mistakes of underperforming cyber security teams the first top most is lack of visibility so you can't protect what you can't see right many organizations lack visibility into their environments there are shadow it solutions that are being used uh, there are the network has become so complicated now that it is digital it's hybrid environment so many complications come in so many apps so many products so many tools are available today that it becomes very challenging and overwhelming at the same time and right? so it's important to be able to identify your key assets including your data devices software and network it's very important to have that after that you it's important to protect all of these as well that also is challenging right you have to ensure that what how do you protect all of these things if we don't know what are they where they are and how they are there right that becomes a challenge so ident identifying risks and non compliance is becoming a very important step here the next the next big mistake according to forbes technical council is the ignoring of basics right so we fund ignoring the fundamentals like basic patch management or you know many organizations invest in it infrastructure and productivity tools but they kind of don't invest in maintaining or managing them properly that becomes a challenge so having the latest patch of the software operating system is great but if it is not protected then it becomes a challenge so running out of running out an outdated version of the operating system or a database could pose actual problems and could expose you on the 
internet right so that's important so it's important to have this then a failure to monitor 24 7 now that you are hybrid now that a business which was now which was just a store is now online it's important for them to protect their assets both offline and online right it's important that you do it 24 7. compliance is a everyday thing it is a continuous thing you cannot one cannot have a point in time uh, compliance and say that yes we are compliant probably you have to ensure that you are monitoring all your assets at a regular time period and ensuring that you are following those practices best practices okay we have a response which says uh, considering the current cyber security risk audit committee needs assurance that organization is secured against cyber uh, cyber threat true also there are some known threats and then there are some unknown threats as well which is what we will come to as the next point if you see most organizations focus on the known threats right which is what are uh, the point which the participant has talked about which said Oh, yeah, I'm just checking on a response. I'm sorry. Just one minute, please. Yes, so somebody has uh, responded with uh, asking if we could share a framework or a regulation published document for firewall audit. We'll come to that. So then uh, I will I, I will respond to that as well. So focusing on known threats is good, but we also need to prepare ourselves for unknown threats that exist at large right we don't know about those those are also possible those the landscape the threat landscape is huge not having a proper incidence response this is the fifth mistake according to forbes technical council that that kind of determines if the cyber security team is underperforming why why do we need this so already some of us have established that it is to assess the configuration and the rule base uh it is for preparing yourself for compliance be ready for a compliance audit of, of course it depends whether you are applicable to a particular compliance or a regulatory standard or a government regulation more and more so why it is important is it's to avoid fines it's to avoid those violations that happen and then obviously it directly impacts your brand image as well right so improve your risk management if the audit is done on a regular basis you identify the risks earlier you get actionable items to avoid misconfigurations and therefore you improve your risk management at the en end of it why are we doing this to be more secure therefore better security is what we are able to derive from a firewall audit a result of that would be taking actionable items and ensuring we take security measures prevent significant data breaches that may happen if we don't take these steps or measures the potential of potential threat of a significant data breach could have devastating effects or consequences from a financial and a brand standpoint right one can think of yahoo as a brand which had a massive data breach and then yahoo just went down right today anybody wants to do search obviously yahoo doesn't come to our picture right it doesn't come to our mind what comes to our mind is a different brand so now when do we do audits like how frequently can we do it what is the frequency what options do we have right so we have so many options that we could think of each organization has a different way of looking at it uh, depending on how they exist within the ecosystem they could do yearly audits half yearly audits quarterly audits monthly audits bi-weekly or weekly audits daily audits or the most ideal would be with every change that's happening. That's where you would want to go. That's your goal. As an organization, you want to ensure that you're compliant with every single change that comes in. You want to reach that goal. What factors will help determine this frequency? Right. Uh, one, network complexity. What is the network complexity of the organization? What type? network security devices do they exist they have in the organization whether it's firewalls routers which is ids ips waf load balancers gateways etc 
uh, the number of network devices that they have, uh, the size of the rule set, the number of objects each each of these devices in the configuration have, number of change requests that they get on a daily basis, uh, the frequency of these change requests. So every organization will have a different change management system in place, change management process in place. All of those factors would make a difference. What is the security approach or the mindset of the organization, whether it is proactive, whether it is reactive, cases which these can happen. Of course, a budget is very important factor for a lot of organizations. And last and the foremost is that uh, the regulatory requirements of organizations. For example, a bank has to uh, comply to PCI DSS or any, or any organization which deals with uh, credit cards or any kind of card payment. They would have to deal with PCI DSS and that recommends at least once a year the audit needs to happen. So basis of these factors, you would be able to decide. What is the frequency at which you would want your audits to happen? The ideal approach would be if you've never done it, start yearly and eventually reach this stage where it is. To, with every single change, you want to reach that, that every single change you do, you're ensuring that these are happening with a full compliant change is happening with full security in place in mind, whatever is required for the organization, whatever is applicable to the organization. It is analyzed, it is assessed and only then it actually goes into the firewall for those changes happen only then. So the question. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about uh, yearly how many times we have to audit a firewall. So the answer to that depends on those factors we just discussed, right? So the network complexity, the number of devices, the rule set size, the objects that exist, uh, the frequency of changes that are coming in for network administrators, the number of changes that are coming in. What is the approach of the organization? So your organization, is it, sell is it proactive for network security? What's the mindset? Or is it reactive that if something happens, if there is a breach or if there is a problem, only then react to uh, do a patch or do a you know fixing of those? Or what's the budget like? What's the network security budget that's there for the organization? And if you have to meet regulatory standards, of course, they would have prescribed their own timelines into when you know, or how frequently that audit would happen. For example, PCI DSS, which would say that it should happen once a year. When when you purchase firewall, which compliance it should have, we need to verify. So uh, it depends largely on what uh, what line of business your organization is in. Right? Uh, for example, if if it is any organization dealing with cards or card payment, then it has to comply with PCI DSS. Uh, right? So if if you are working in a government a space, then they have their own set of uh, regulations that you have to meet, right? So you'll have to consider all of those aspects, which line of business you would apply, which regulatory standards would apply to your organization or your business. And therefore, according to that, you would want to go ahead and uh, do these audits. And again, there are firewall brands, the OEMs, all of these would have published their set of uh, compliances to various uh, standards on their website. So you could have a look at that as well. Before you make a purchase, you can ask for it. They will be able to share those details with you. So you could definitely go ahead and do that. So the next point that I want to talk about is with what can we conduct these firewall audits, right? One, we do it manually. Manually, we could go on to each firewall console look at the firewalls configuration, maybe using SSH or using REST API or using uh, the web GUI and look at each aspect of the firewall. How many rules are configured? What are the configuration aspects of the firewall? What are the security measures that have that are put in place, whether there's password complexity there or not, etc. But the challenge with performing manual audits, it would be simple if it is a small uh, network. It's one or two devices. It's easy to do it manually. Uh, but if it is a large network or uh, the complexity is large, 
then it starts to become complicated right uh, resources you need will be large the time effort taken to do these audits will become massive and then performing these manual reviews on a periodic basis will become very cum cumbersome and very resource intensive so it will have significant costs associated with it so what can you do next create automated scripts so that this time and effort gets reduced but that again will become cumbersome when you look at the complexity of the network the variety of firewalls that you have you will have various brands of firewalls or oems available each of them will need a separate script because they don't talk in the same language in that case it becomes even more complicated so what do you do then uh, invest in a solution in a technology that helps you do all of this right as networks will become more complicated auditing all of these networks will pose a challenge right manual process will not be able to keep up with the pace at which you are growing your business and your security needs therefore it's important to automate the process and further you want to also be able to respond to these threats also so you want eventually one by one you want to go to that stage where you're doing it if you're doing it manually today my recommendation is try automating uh, aspects of your audit certain aspects of your audit can be automated certain aspects of the audit just have to be done manually they will have to be done manually for example securing the firewall physically that no software will be able to determine and say that oh yeah this firewall is physically secure certain aspects you will have to do it manually but the other aspects you should be able to automate and you should focus on automating some some of this for more advanced ones invest in a tool invest in a technology such that you are able to replace all of this hard time intrinsic and cost intrinsic effort to ensure that you are able to identify them much faster and respond to those much faster as well uh so we did a survey and we understood that the cost of doing a manual audit let's say for example we have 100 firewalls it takes about 77 hours on an average for one resource to do an audit of one firewall with let's say about 100 firewall rules and about 1000 objects okay uh then how many times do we do the audit let's say for example we do it quarterly or four times in a year the average cost of the resource would be around 22 dollars that means the cost of doing an audit for 100 firewalls comes to 677600 dollars so you can imagine the cost associated is significantly high if you're going to do this manually that's a very simple calculation we we we've taken a survey which said that approximately on an average it takes 9 man days to carry out a manual audit review along with generating a report for a rule base which sizes of average of 100 rules and 1000 firewall objects this is the cost that we're looking at from a manual standpoint which is a significant cost so that brings me to what is the motivation that is needed to invest in tools and technologies so you boost productivity by investing in the right tool and technology for the staff that they will be able to carry out these periodic audits because they are being assisted with a software with a, with a tool or a technology reduce the mean time time to identify security risks and non compliances and insecure rules right minimize the effort it takes to take, carry out all of these audits on a day to day basis uh, establish an organization wide governance process for reviewing and prioritizing these non compliances and you have a significant roi involved here investing in a product can anywhere between 50 to 75% is what is your return on investment that you can get it's important to do this so that you are able to reduce the cost it takes have the motivation to carry out these audits periodically identify risks faster and minimize the time it takes to do all of this right and have a organization wide governance process
how to maintain the firewall security and security standards with cloud in hybrid model so here uh, each so the question is how to maintain the firewall security configuration security standards with cloud and hybrid models so i will answer this question in the how section of the presentation and the webinar i will just keep this in my mind and i will answer this as well so there are products and tools out there in the market which help you with doing all of this security analysis uh giving you the risk checking the compliance etc one of them is firesec uh, which is a security analysis and orchestration platform uh it does the security analysis it supports multiple vendors it provides a unified risk view for the organization it has a lot of customizable features it can do continuous compliance etc uh it is a product that has been built in house by network intelligence there are other solutions in the market uh, which you can look at skybox to fin algosec firemon manage engine firewall analyzer or titania studio etc each of them have their own set of uh, goods uh, pros and cons uh, you you are free to go and look at those if you're interested in looking at firesec uh, you can check your q and a right now there is a link for registration to have a walk through of the product deep dive into it and also a calendly link so you can block our calendar for uh, doing a deep dive uh, demonstration on the product and there is a qr code that you could scan if you want to reach out uh, for the registration so now to how so one plan ahead of time right you always have to plan ahead of time make sure that you are ready getting ready for a firewall audit prepare so you cannot one cannot go for shopping without a shopping list right otherwise we keep wandering across the mall and just comparing various things the same goes with firewall auditing right you want to ensure you have a clear goal in mind with respect to what you are interested in finding out what what is it that you want to identify what risks are we looking at right monitor the rule changes and configuration changes that are happening monitor the events log them make make sure you monitor them automate the tri trivial tasks that are there like for example backups or uh, enabling of rules or disabling of rules adding comments to rules adding ips to a block list etc all of these can be trivially automated and should be automated you should be encouraged to look at this automation will really help you uh, eventually you want to get to a stage where you are able to orchestrate all of these changes right aim to aim to reach this milestone if you are starting from today your aim has to be to reach a stage where you are able to orchestrate all of the changes through a solution or a technology based on situations and circumstances that come to your mind right today for example a bad ip has been discovered there are a lot of signals that are being sent across by various security tools there are sim solutions there are antivirus solutions there are endpoint protection solutions which are talking to each other and giving out signals and identifying even firewalls themselves firewall oems are also themselves sending out these signals and messages to out their customers across the globe saying okay this is an ip address that you need that we recommend you block so you could go ahead and do all of these automated just make sure that you have a scenario that comes into play have a playbook which says that if this comes in what is the next action that has to be taken and how exactly that has to happen so it takes all of this through and it gives you that that today you identified the risk today at let's say 10 o'clock by 10:30 you have responded to that threat that's the that's the time you want to reach that's the way you want to reach as fast as you can to address it so let's have a look at uh, some of the checklists that i have prepared this link will be shared by my team my colleagues here uh, on the chat as well and it's kind of giving us a process sort of a process if you're starting today i would uh, highly encourage you to have a look at this and check what all you will be able to take adapt from this this is not the only list that you have to consider adapt with this 
make changes to this list according to your organizational need and go about it so there are multiple things that you have to look at multiple things to take care of but this is just from where you can start adapting uh, so we prepare a checklist uh, you know make uh, copies you have copies of the security policy of the organization uh, check if you have access to the firewall logs if you can if there exists a network diagram network topology take it if you do not have one prepare that uh, review the documentation of the previous audits if any that have happened if they have this is happening for the first time then skip this step go ahead with the next steps identify the relevant isps vpns etc uh, identify and get all the information of the firewall vendors that exist it includes all the kind of information that is required for all the brands that you might have you could have uh, let's say a firewall a fortinet firewall or a checkpoint firewall or a cisco firewall which all firewalls or you have a palo alto or sophos or a juniper or f5 etc there are so many brands available what all do you have which model which firmware version does that have make a note of all of these important things understand the setup of all key servers within the organization uh, review the rule based maintenance procedures review the change management process itself let's say for example the process does there is there a change management process that exists for the organization are they following it having a change management process is one and actually following it and implementing it is another so you have to ensure both are happening are the rule changes that are authorized only those are implemented or there are any unauthorized changes also analyze that identify that determine whether all the previous changes that have happened so far are they authorized or not you will be able to get this through a ticketing management system or a chain management system that that most organization would have invested in make a note of that keep it handy uh, audit the firewalls physical and operating system security make sure the management servers are physically secure this is something which you might have to actually go ahead visually see for yourself that yes it is being maintained securely and safely and the access to all of these servers is being tracked and logged and maintained and only authorized personnel are able to have their hands on the firewalls right to make sure of that check the access procedures for these verify all the updates for each vendor have they been applied or not so here there could be a debate which said that we can't go to the latest firmware version all of a sudden so we want to go on a step by step process you could do that ideally you want to be at least at n minus 1 let's say for example if the firmware version of a firewall is 10 today they have updated it and they've launched it then you want to make sure you are at least at at 9 you can't be at 4 or 5 because there have been so many patches so many security patches that may have been updated and your operating system of the firewall the itself is vulnerable now because it is very obsolete so you want to be make sure of that make sure the underlying operating system of the firewall also is secure you know there are hardening checks that you can follow so there are a cis benchmarks for the operating systems for the firewalls you could go and have a look at those various other standards are there stig uh, the national security procedure nist you could follow those to be able to harden those operating systems the quest there is a question here before i uh, take that the two questions so you are saying that so here it is says what tools are you using for firewall audit So, like I said, there are several tools that are there available. One is FireSec built in-house by Network Intelligence, and apart from that, there are several other uh, solutions in the market. Uh, for example, Skybox, Token, AlgoSec. So you could have a look at it. For Network Intelligence, we use our in-house tool, which is FireSec. Uh, then we have uh, optimize the rule base, right? So there are lot of rules that are available. in the configurations over time this becomes huge it's going to become very difficult so this is the traditional problem of network administrators right how do they identify uh, this the compliance and the security aspects of each of these rules that exist right 
therefore it's important to do these activities on a regular basis to reduce the bloat of the configuration so you should remove redundant rules uh, delete the redundant rules remove shadow rules identify unused objects and remove them or disable them uh, evaluate of evaluate the order of rules in which which they are placed so that it will improve your performance so these are more from the optimization standpoint uh, remove any unused connections that exist document the rules for changes and a future reference right conduct a risk assessment to ensure that uh, you are following or practicing the industry standards uh, there there will be a series of questions that you might want to ask your your organization or those responsible for network security right so are there any overly permissive rules are there any rules which are allowing uh, it's freely available the idea of having a firewall is to ensure you tighten up the rules so that only traffic that is to be allowed is only being allowed not that everything else is being allowed into the organization or so it should be thoroughly checked whether rishit for example needs to have access to the server or not from his endpoint or from his machine right so there are certain restrictions that you want to place tighten up the rules that's the thumb rule for any firewall configuration you might want to have so you ensure that there are no overly permissive rules there are no risky ports or risky services being allowed from your dmz to internal network there are no risky services from inbound to the internet right so you want to ensure all of those you want to ensure that no direct traffic is being allowed from internet to internal network not the dmc but the internal network let's say for example would you treat this as a risk or not let me know so there is a traffic that's coming from outside the internet and it is directly able to reach the database server of a fire a bank do you think that would pose a security risk yes it would right because you are allowing external access to your banking database server that's a very big risk because you want to ensure only authorized person are accessing that so somebody has recommended that as a best practice the firmware should be delta uh, firmware delta should not be more than 1 that's correct so you document all of this save your report improve the process replace these manual tasks with automations conduct and audit all of these activities document it thoroughly create a actionable firewall change workflow chain management is very important review that process approve the entire audit this checklist whatever you have responded to this checklist make sure you have an approval in place who has done it uh, who has approved it who has authorized it all of this you have to document and keep it this is a very brief uh, checklist i would call it a basic checklist there are so many other points to discuss but we have very short of time to be honest to be able to discuss those but we will make sure that uh, we conduct these webinars more often so that we can discuss and deep dive into uh, other aspects of the audits as well these are some of the references that you can have a look at uh, so to answer one of the questions uh, which said how do you maintain firewall security configuration uh, security standards with cloud in hybrid magic mod in hybrid model so here is where you will have to understand that depending on which which line of business you are in what all will apply to you whether you are processing payment whether you are processing cards and tci dss is the go to standard uh, whether you are doing any other uh, aspects then there are other security standards or government regulations that will be required like gdpr for example for the europe then all of those will be important and each of them have specified certain points that you have to ensure that these need to be followed so for example there is a sans checklist which says that these are the set of uh, checks that you want to ensure some of them we've already covered uh, there is another document i can pull out that for you which says that this is what you want to ensure right so it says review the rule sets to ensure the following order as it is uh, have anti spoofing filters whether user rules are being permitted or not management rules are being permitted or not right whether your mechan alert mechanism is in place or not whether there is an application based firewall 
whether it is statefully being inspected or not whether there is logging enabled or not effective logging is very important whether the patches and updates are in place or not where is the location of the dmz whether any vulnerability assessments have been done for the network or not right? whether uh, protocol ports are being restricted or not for example there is a list of these which you want to avoid you want to block these and this is a list that has been recommended by uh, sans institute you can follow these i will share the link as well uh, with you all post the webinar you can have a look at these so these are the checklists again there are a variety of points that you can look at so you can see all of these from here and then you can further have a look at some other uh, audit checklists that are available out here uh, this is available uh, i have created a open link for this so you could adapt to this workflow and make modify your changes as well so coming back to the last point then uh, from here we covered some of the checks so just a refresher for this you have uh, rule based checklist in secure rules you want to identify those make sure you remove them and optimize your rule base by removing shadow rules redundant rules rules with empty objects or inactive rules symmetric rules consider grouping of rules based on the source destination or service uh, reorder rules to uh, improve the performance of the firewall remove overly permissive rules or rules which are allowing a lot of uh, ips to a destination log rules make sure there are no rules which are not being logged especially ensure the dropped rules are being logged for sure so you would not know if you've denied a rule and if you don't log it you will never know if that is being hit or not uh, have comments on each rule so that it determines why that rule was created what is the necessity of the rule etc don't allow too many ports or services you want to restrict them are we allowing any critical ports like a database servers being allowed over internet or not are there any risky ports or clear text protocols uh, clear text protocols that are being allowed make sure you avoid those then from a configuration standpoint you want to look at uh, are is there a default username for admin being used or not whether the default pass admin password is being used or not whether syslog servers are configured whether ntp server is configured whether the dns server is configured whether an snmp server is configured if yes what version of snmp is it using recommendation is to use v3 uh, whether uh, the ssl certificate uh, ssl is being used or not or now we are moving to tls if tls you have to be at 1.3 not 1.1 or 1.2 is there a login banner that is set on the firewall do you have admin timeouts session timeouts admin lockouts in place how many number of firewall admin users do you have do you have crypto cryptographic trees uh, set and are being used in vpns uh, whether event logging for the firewall itself is being enabled for various events of interests whether we are blocking icmp traffic on wan interfaces do we have a password complexity set for each user including the admins and other other standard users do we have a password complexity set for it do we have password complexity set set for ipsec vpn users uh, does the firewall have a host name configured what is the firmware version of the firewall what is the minimum ideal timeout so if no if uh, if they are logged in on the firewall and they are not doing anything it's idle then what's the timeout it should time out after the some time time period let's say 2 minutes 3 minutes 5 minutes and it should log out and automatically prompt for login are the licenses in place for various aspects and features of the firewall in place are they active are they valid or not it's very important to ensure that firewall licenses are in place for various aspects of the firewall itself right there are various features that need licenses they need to be active uh, we disable the unused interfaces etc so these are some of the common checks common checklists that you need to ensure that they are applied uh, we can take questions and then we will have a pop quiz 
I hope I am in time here. We are at two twenty. Pratik, we have time. Uh, we have time. We have time. Great. Thank you. So, if there are any questions, I can take those. Uh, if there are no questions, we will go ahead with the pop quiz. Vishik, there is one question from a gentleman, Ma'am Sunil. So, is there a provision in tools from whitelisting the no rules? Whitelisting the no the no rules, you know. Uh, so, example, four four three inbound is allowed for any source. However, okay. the tool may give uh, this as an observation okay. and may degrade assurance score. But is there a provision in a tool uh, from whitelisting these such rules? Right. So, so uh, I can so from a from one product that I have used, FireSec has an option to mark uh, certain observations as an exception for organizations. So this is where the customizability aspect comes into play. We can't be hard and fast on everything out there. That's as a checklist. So there are provisions uh, for solutions where you would want to say that uh, this is to be marked as an exception because my business runs on it and I need to have that access. Right. So you want to kind of ensure that you could mark that as an exception and that gets treated as an exception. That's one way of doing it. The second is. Uh, there are provisions which would say that you mark this finding as a false positive, okay, saying that in our context, this does not apply. So you could do both ways. Does that answer your question? Yes, uh, so since they cannot speak on behalf of them, I, I'd like to take that. Uh, if they need any additional details, they can reach out to us on the provided channels, right? And uh, also, also, there's one more uh, question during your initial slides. I wanted to mention this. So from the attendees, so we see different roles, right? So some of them mentioned uh, that from management perspective, so they want an assurance on security, right? So yeah. probably how can uh, our approach or a tool that we are pr proposing to the audience, how can it be helpful for them to ensure their management assurance topic is covered from security angle? Right. So uh, when you look at the problems that we discussed today, right? So there are so, so many issues that misconfiguration is an important aspect, right? Then there are so, so many points that we discussed around the checklist, what all things need to be done. Apart from this, the motivation to invest in a tool and technology for them from a business standpoint is look at the cost it takes to do a manual review. Right. Look at time it's going to take to do a manual review. Let's say I have 100 firewalls and I have a average of 100 rules. Manually, if I'm going to review all of these, it's going to take a lot of time. Right. About nine man days effort is going to go into getting one review. You have a full year to go, a full year of changes that are going to happen. It's going to be massive. The network security is going to be very challenging. How do you reduce all of this is where you know that that we are able to provide an automated mechanism with which these issues can be identified and highlighted, right? These risks are being highlighted faster. So though if you're able to identify your risks and non-compliances faster, you'll be able to address them also faster, right? So your mean time to reduce the issues that you've identified and you're responded to those that is getting reduced. Therefore, it is improving your security, right? So that's where tools and technologies and products will come into play. They will reduce this mean time. It will become easier to conduct these audits on a regular basis. And earlier in the slide, I had recommended that if you are at this stage where you're doing your audit yearly, Aim to reach a stage where you're doing your audits with every single change that's happening. Doing that manually will be very difficult and therefore having a product will help you. So that's the whole that's the issue that that you know CISOs and management and CXO level uh, wants that there has to be a real time view or a visibility into their security risks, right? They want to have a real time security posture view. Today, they will come and ask if they ask the security team or the network security team, what is the security posture of my organization? Where do I stand? 
they don't want to look at so uh, there is port 443 being opened or not they want to look at the birds of you and say yes we are 80% secure or 50% secure or we are not secure at all what is it that where do we stand today that's the question they want to answer right and that can be answered through all of these audits that happen right? and that's where the tool and technology will help is that answer your question Yes, uh, Rishit. Uh, I uh, I just noticed uh, Pratik has posted the pop quiz, so I would request all the attendees to go through this pop quiz and uh, the top five uh, uh, top five responses uh, are going to be uh, given an opportunity to do a firewall audit from our side. Uh, so I let Rishit add some more points if, if in this case. Yeah, that's fine, and uh, so you can. scan the qr code and uh, give the pop quiz it's i think about five questions it should not take more than one minute to do it uh, whoever responds to this first and does it correctly our team is going to reach out to you and uh, we will be providing access to firesec uh, you will be able to uh, test it out you would be able to put your firewall configuration scan it and see where it stands you know where, where what your network security For one firewall, at least you'll be able to get a get a picture, a feel of it, and then we can take it forward. So, meanwhile, if there is any questions, please keep them coming in. Uh, so, we'll be happy to answer. We have uh, four more minutes to conclude. Uh, otherwise uh, so you can reach out to uh, both of us in the provided channels all the links are being provided contact links looking at the published q and a so i can see uh -oh. Okay, I hope you're taking up the pop quiz. While you're doing that, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it, and look forward to connecting with all of you. We have shared our connects with you all through the Q and A. Pratik has shared uh, the connects and coordinates of all of us, uh, including mine, Kiran's, and. other channels through which you can got reach out to us we will look forward to hearing from you if there is any other topic that you would like us to start having we can have a look at those as well uh, prati can you share the feedback form uh, the url for the feedback as well which will capture that sure sure So there is a question that I have received, which says, "What key points should be considered while reviewing the rule set?" We discussed that in large. That's available on the uh, the checklist, the basic firewall audit checklist that we had shared. I will reshare that again, just a second. So you can have a look at that. So I've shared that with you right now, and if legacy application works on port 80 and do not support uh, any other, what should be done? 
so here like i said that uh, there are uh, certain cases where you know it cannot be applicable and your business runs on it you'll have to accept that as a risk you know certain risks you you can't really do anything about therefore you will have to accept that as a risk for your organization and continue to use it but the recommendation is that you should ideally go ahead and try and see if you are able to move to a more secure way of using it modern modernize your app nowadays it's very easy to modernize a web application even if it's legacy it can be modernized a uh, lot of cloud solutions available for it lot of opportunity available to modernize your apps some of them are free to be done so you could have a look at those uh, all the cloud service providers uh, azure aws uh, google cloud all of them have uh, various options available with which you can modernize your apps so my recommendation is one if you can't do any of it accept that as a business risk and continue to do your business uh, the second one would be if you if you can really consider this then definitely try to transition to modernize your app go digital go cloud native it will become a lot more secure that answers your question all right i think we've hit the time uh, it's 2:30 ist today thank you for your time really appreciate your time here and thank you very much team for uh, coordinating and organizing this it was very uh, wonderful to interact with all of you and look forward to doing more webinars uh, please share your feedback if you would like me to uh, take up more webinars on uh, or deep dive into a particular audit or a checklist etc we could definitely go into that please share your suggestions on the feedback form uh, prateek has shared that feedback form please go ahead and i highly encourage you to uh, give the feedback it will help us improve it will help us improve our events as well we will have a lot more webinars lined up so do check out our linkedin posts and uh, we will also reach out to you or over emails thank you very much over to you kiran thank you very much thank you thank you very much uh, rishi that was a wonderful session i really hope it it added some value for the attendees i uh, we look forward connecting with all of you uh, thank you prateek and uh, hema for your support as well in arranging the session uh, very nicely so it was very interactive i really appreciate all the attendees for their patience and time uh, we look forward connecting with you one to one uh, very soon thank, thank you, you very much thank you everyone have a good day have a good day thank you